What's good, guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your boy Reese Blaze. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to all that great stuff. So, uh, my last video, I showed you guys how to use setup the control rig, but I didn't really show you the whole setup. So, I'm gonna do that in this video. Now, keep in mind, I'm not gonna be setting out everything just because it's gonna take most most of it is repetitive, as you've seen in the last video. So, I already have my control rig for this character called Shazam. I'm gonna click on this control rig. It's gonna open up. And uh, pretty much, yes, here it is. So everything is set up properly. Now, something I just want to clarify here is um, for the head, okay? You remember what we did? We actually copied the location. And what I did here was to paste local transform because when I bring this over to sequencer, if you paste that with global transform, it's gonna like be off. So, you know, the right one is actually local transform. Just say I'll tell you guys that. All right, yo, so um, the legs are pretty set up, but it's not, see, this is not in the right locations. Actually, I think I can move this. Now, let me just move this backwards, man. It doesn't matter. Let's see. Yeah. Actually, 44. And then I'm going to move this like negative 5. No. Let's move this negative five. Oh. Is this going forward? I'm confused. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's going to the side. And then this should be going either back. Yeah. So I'm just gonna move this kind of back. And then bring this to forty. Or 38 okay there you go much better okay so um my character here uh, actually look at the head that location doesn't make sense okay let's make this negative 20 oh and 30 and then I'll make this five yeah all right y'all so I just I was just fixing a little bit of things okay uh, even this is still high. Why is it so complicated, man? Okay, much better. All right, so um, now the complete setup for the forward solve, which is right. Let's just bring it. Oh, this is the backward solve. Okay, my bad. I'm gonna come to the backward solve as well. So for the forward solve, the last time I did this um, video, I, di I didn't really show you guys um, how to set up the, the curves value. I I'll show you what that is. So if I double click here, and then I go to my mesh, as you can see, I already applied clots simulation to the cape, so that's fine. So all these are curves. So basically I do have some adjustment that I wanna make with the neck as well and the hand, see that? And also, I have some um, face animation as well. So if you want to make him angry, you can actually make him angry. Open his mouth. Mm. Yep, that opens. Make him smile just a little bit. Uh, oh, let's make him smile. So, you know, I have all that set up. Ooh, look at his teeth, man. Shit. Yeah. What's going on with the teeth? It's the lighting. Anyways, it looks like a creep right now. So these are all morph targets and you can actually use set this up in the control rig. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So I'm going to come over here to my control rig here. And what I've actually done is, so this is the fingers. So this right here are all the curves that I use, like everything. Okay, so for the fourth, so basically what you want to do is you want to bring in a knot called set curve value, right? I'm gonna disconnect this because I don't need it. For some reason it's not getting disconnected. Okay, there you go. So you bring in a curve set curve value, right? And then you want to say get control float. All right, and then you just connect the I look down or whatever your curve is and you you know you correspond and then click this or move this to the value 
So pretty much that's what that's what you have to do. So for each of the um, for each of the morph targets, you have to actually create a control. Okay. So when I create my control, I don't I just put the gizmo invincible. So if I put this gizmo enable here, you're gonna see that I do have like a, a, a gizmo joint, right? But I just disabled it because I'm not I'm not using it. You don't need that, except you wanna have like um, some controllers on the face, which I don't really advise you do, but you know, your choice to be honest. So pretty much that's what I did. I'm gonna disable this too. So pretty much that's what I had to do for each of the morph targets. So you get your set curve value, which is the actual um, morph target. And then this control float is going to the controls. Okay, I'm gonna delete this. So when you set that up, you'll be able to um, do animate that in sequencer. So now let's go to the forward self. I'm mean, sorry, the backward self. So ladies and gentlemen, for the backward self, basically if you want to manipulate, you know, a baked animation, that's this, this how you set it up. So the only difference with the uh, forward and with with the forward and backward self, in terms of, you know, um, getting all the controls to work, is you're gonna set transform, and then you want to get transform bone. So basically the set transform is getting the data from the controls and then it's transferring it over to the bone if that makes sense so it's doing the reverse as compared to what, what we did here right as you can see everything i just did the same like still the same method is just in reverse so if i come over here you can see here we used set transform bone and get transform control but on the forward cell is set transform control and get transform bone so just reverse so basically everything is reverse, right? And I think for the legs, so for the legs, basically you you have to um, use the set transform control and then get transform bone. So you transfer that over to the get transform bone. And then move this, do the same for the knee as well. So pretty much it's, yo, it's the same thing. You know, I know, I know the, the original says basic IK. Like if you look at the, let me show you here. It's kind of hard to navigate this, to be honest. When you look at the leg setup in, on re, if you look at the leg setup, you can see that we had this basic IK, but we can't really use this in um in the backward solve. So how you're gonna do that is basically, oh where is it? Okay, right here. So basically, you're going to bring in a project to new parents nod, right? So you click that there and then this will all this will be the control. So we can be able to translate the knee onto this place. So you're going to put the knee control to the set transform control, right? And then the bone that is supporting it, left leg, left leg. So you do the same for the for the right leg as well so yeah it's basically really just the same thing you know i, I won't really i think for the for the for the legs this is just the most important thing you have to do so you set transform control and then get transform bone okay so ignore all this this is i was trying different methods of doing this but i found this was the right way and then for the for for the curve values we want to set control float so basically you're actually getting the data from the controllers and transferring it onto the bone so again reverse so pretty much same thing you're going to reverse everything and ladies and gentlemen that's it and you have your whole control rig now the good thing is when you do this one time you don't have to do this all over again you know because i know it's a pain imagine if you have to do this all, all the time you know it'd be crazy so that's the good thing, okay. So pretty much that's um, how you set up a control rig. Um, I'm just gonna do something. I wanna change the color of, I don't like this color. Let's give it a blue just to make it different, you know. Let's give it a blue here. 
get a blue. They want to give this a blue too. <clears throat> right? And then change this to blue as well. Change this to blue. Change this to blue. And then for the I think the left shoulders, so I'll make this. Yeah, they, I, I can leave it as red. Yeah. Okay, so let me save this. So now, if I go to my sequencer here, so I'm just going to go here with my sequencer. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag my character here. Boom. So we are going to go to... Mm, control Reek and then asset base Shazam Reek. So you can see that this actually came in. So now when I scroll down to the Shazam Reek, um, I can see my hand adjustment. So I can just see, change this to one and that will fix that. And also the neck, I'm going to change that to one. <clears throat> so that will fix that. So pretty much now you can start, you know, <clears throat> playing around and changing a lot of things. So basically, I um, I do want my character to be laying on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate my character like this. Let's bring him up just a little bit, right? So now I am going to actually let's bring him up. Looks too down to me. Let's bring him up. Okay, that's much better. So now we can actually just put the his hands on the floor. So you guys see how easy this is, right? So you can actually play around, get a certain pose that you want to get, you know, just put this down. And then for the neck here, I want him to actually do like he's dead or something. <laughs> and then this should be around here. Uh, make this here. And then I'll make this here. Now somebody asked me what is my storyboarding process for my animations. Um, I am gonna do that later. It's kind of complicated because trust me, you sometimes I don't feel, you know, I'm not really motivated to do animations. I'm telling the truth. So it depends. You know, it's it varies to be honest. It really, really varies. So I'm gonna put this like this. Then I think for the knee, we can actually, yeah. So you guys can see, you know, on Rui and Jimin, animating in real time is the best because I can easily spot mistakes. Like that easy, you know? Okay, so pretty much we have our character all looking like he did or something. So let me go ahead to play with the face too. Right, so I'm just gonna bring the head a little bit up because I just want to see the face, then I'll put it back. So let's see. Um, yeah, let's make his eyes to blink. Close his eyes. And maybe I don't know how people die, but uh, <laughs> how do you stay dead? It's funny. So let's see. Yeah, let's make that like that. Ah uh, uh, no. So I think I'm gonna raise my. Yeah, something like that. See that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I like this. Hmm. I think I'm going to make the brown go inner. 
Well, I think the ice cream right can actually go up just a little bit. Yeah, much better. And then this brown inner up. I think maybe. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, you get the point, right? So I can, I can keep playing with this, you know, if I want. Oh, it's crazy, man. It's really crazy. Okay, so I can put this back to zero. Yep, pretty much. And so if I go to simulate, this will simulate with the cape. Yeah, but the cape is inside. So one thing you can do with this is you can actually right click on my character here just because I want the cape to, um, to sort of lay on the floor, not above it. So look at that. It's not supposed to pass through the floor. Well, let's see if I raise this up. Raise it up just a little bit. A little bit slow. I don't know why. I think there are probably too many simulations running. Okay. So now. So let's see if I move this down. Yeah, I still passing through the floor. Oh well, it's something I have to fix. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's everything you need to know about setting up the control rig. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have um, any questions, and I can, you know, you know, um, respond and answer your questions. Anyways, I'm that's it for this video. If you guys like, give it a thumbs up, take it easy, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.